Hi, Mr. Zappone here, and today we're going to do some right triangle trigonometry. Um, and we have a word up at the top left called Sokotoa, Chief Sokotoa. Um, this is a really good mnemonic for remembering sine, cosine, and tangent functions. If you've never seen these before, some of this will be new, but on your calculators you have a, hopefully you can see that, the sine, the cosine, and the tangent functions. Um, these are very, very, very important in physics, and we're going to see what they mean. So right here we have a triangle, a right triangle. There's a 90 degree angle inside. That's what that means. We know that all angles add up to 180 degrees in a triangle from geometry, and we know that the hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. So this is our hypotenuse. And you probably know Pythagorean theorem. Um, a squared plus B squared equals C squared. In this case, R is our C squared. And these side, this would be side A, side B. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared, or X squared plus Y squared equals R squared, using the uh, nomenclature that we have set in place here. So we're going to look at Sokotoa now, sine, the sine of theta. Theta is an angle. This is a Greek letter, and it simply means angle. The sine of this angle equals the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So, opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side, in this case, is directly across from it. It's the y. The hypotenuse is across from the right angle. It's r. So, sine of theta equals y divided by r. Easy enough. Cosine, the same thing. Cosine equals the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So, cosine equals adjacent side. This is the theta still. What's the adjacent side? Well, it's this side right here. It's adjacent to it. And the hypotenuse, again, is always going to be r. So the cosine of theta equals x divided by r. And tangent equals opposite over adjacent. So we have this angle theta here. Tangent of this angle equals the opposite side, which is y, divided by the adjacent side, which is x. And those are our three main trig functions that we are going to use and really need to know these for physics. They're going to be important throughout the entire course. Sine, cosine, and tangent. Sokotoa is how we remember them. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent opposite over adjacent. So you could figure out angles based on knowing the lengths of the sides and a triangle and so forth. And you could also, there's inverses of these. Um, Seeing as how um, tangent of theta equals y over x, or opposite over adjacent, if you take the inverse tangent, let's say you knew um, this value and this value. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that's y over x. If you took the inverse tan to the minus 1 of y divided by x, that would actually tell you this angle, as long as your calculator was in degree mode. we got to be very careful that our calculators are in degree mode when we are doing these problems and not in radian mode. So we can use the inverse of these functions to actually figure out angles. And those inverses are right there in your calculator as well. Sine is the same thing. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So it's the inverse of it to get theta and the inverse of cosine to get the theta as well. So we can use these formulas, these trig functions to basically figure out a whole bunch of information about triangles and we're going to need that when we're doing forces and vectors and components of weight, components of speed, and all sorts of stuff in physics class. So let's just do a few problems, see if we got it down. Um, what is the hypotenuse? So I want to know what this is, this side right here. What is my hypotenuse? And what do I know? Well, I know this angle theta. They gave me an angle. It's 22 degrees. I could figure out this angle too because I know this is 90 and these got to add up to 180. But um, what do I know in respect to theta? I know the opposite side, right? Um, so I have two formulas down here that have an opposite in them. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. That doesn't help me because I don't know the adjacent side. And it's not going to help me solve for the hypotenuse. So I want to use the sine function here. Sine theta, sine 22, equals the opposite side, 5, divided by the hypotenuse. And all you got to do is solve this in your calculator. And, of course, you got to bring the h up and bring the sign down. A little arithmetic if we rearrange this to get h by itself in the numerator. And now you just put this in your calculator. 5 divided by 
and the sine of 22. Just make sure your calculator is in degree mode, and it turns out that this is 13.3 side length. So that's all we have to do with these. Um, another problem, what is the hypotenuse? Same angle, same side. Theta is 22 degrees. This time, we know the adjacent side. We don't know the opposite side, and we want to figure out H. So these two formulas have H's in them. i got to use one of these. But I don't know the opposite side, so I can't use sine. And this, of course, doesn't have H, which I'm trying to solve for, so that's no good to me. So I'm going to use cosine. Cosine theta equals the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, and I'm going to plug in my numbers. Cosine 22 equals 5 over H. I'm going to rearrange it, just like I did the sine function. Uh, H equals 5 divided by the cosine of 22 degrees, or 5.4. Please put these in your calculator. Make sure you get the same answer. If you do not, then I'm guessing your calculator is in radian mode and not degree mode, and we're going to have to fix that. Um, in this case, we got a little bit more. What is theta? What is the hypotenuse? Um, some of you might be tempted to just go a squared uh, for hypotenuse. Use Pythagorean theorem. Uh, 7 squared plus 5 squared equals h squared, right? And then you take the square root of both sides. So h equals this right here, 49 plus 25, the square root of that, yada, yada. Um, you could do that. You could figure out the hypotenuse from that. You could also figure out the angle first using trig functions. How are we going to figure out the angle? Let's do theta first. Uh, remember, we have to use the inverse functions when we're dealing with these. So what do I know with respect to theta? Do I know the hypotenuse? No, not yet. So this has a hypotenuse in it. Can't use it. Ah. This has a hypotenuse in it. We can't use it. This has a hypotenuse in it. We can't use it. We don't know. So we're going to use the tangent function. Inverse tangent or on your TI-85 million, use second tangent. That's how we get the inverse. So opposite over adjacent. So second tan of 5 divided by 7. And when you put that in your calculator, ignore that extra parenthesis right there, um, you will get 35.5 degrees. So this is 35.5 degrees. Of course, you can figure out this angle now because they all add up to 180. And now you could actually use this to figure out the hypotenuse. You don't need uh, Pythagorean theorem. Sine 35 equals opposite over hypotenuse. So, or you could use cosine 35 equals 7 over h. And either function will work. They will all give you the same thing. Pythagorean theorem will also give you 8.6. So you could actually solve this in three different ways at this point. And I know in the beginning you're going to be quick to run back to Pythagorean theorem because that's what you're used to. But again, this is really what you want to be doing. And it'll become more comfortable with time. You'll eventually by the end of the year be doing sine. You won't use Pythagorean theorem ever again. Um, so what is theta here? Well, we have theta's here. We know the opposite side, and we also know the hypotenuse. So which formula do I got to use? Well, I have an opposite and a hypotenuse. This has an opposite but no hypotenuse. This has a hypotenuse but no opposite. So I'm using the sine function here. Inverse sine, second sine, equals 5 over 7. And when you put that in your calculator, for some reason we have these parentheses here each time, uh, you get 45.6 degrees. So that's all you got to do. You just got to figure out at this point, make sure you know how to put these into your calculator. Some of you may be using uh, the TI-30. Some of you may be even using phones right now or iPads. Or You got to figure out how to put these in correctly. I'll help you with it if you need it. Um, so again, theta. What is theta here? Well, in this case, hopefully you see, what do we know? We don't know the opposite side. We don't know O, so anything with an O is gone. We do not know this. We know the adjacent side, and we know the hypotenuse. So we're going to use the inverse cosine function here. Cosine, inverse cosine, 5 over 7 equals 44.4 degrees. So right triangle trigonometry is all about using sine, cosine, and tangent to figure out side lengths and angles. Um, this is the last one we're going to do. We're going to fill in all unknowns because... A little more involved. Again, you could um, use Pythagorean theorem to figure this out. Uh, this is a a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? Our hypotenuse is 9, 81. Uh, 36 plus b squared equals 81. And you could do that. 
you can figure that out um, using Pythagorean theorem. We're not going to do that though. Again, we're going to get away from that. Uh, what we're first going to do is we're going to figure out this angle theta in here. And I know the adjacent side. This is the adjacent side, and I know the hypotenuse. So the inverse cosine of the adjacent over the hypotenuse, 48.2 degrees. And we don't even need to write that in there because it's there nice and neat. Um, now we're going to figure out the other angle. And all you really got to know is all three of these angles, this angle plus this 90 degree angle, plus this angle, x, whatever it is, got to add up to 180. Or these two angles right here must add up to 90 degrees. So this angle is the difference from 90 degrees. 90 minus 48.2, this is 41.8 degrees. And that's just simple. All angles add up to 180. The only thing left we have to figure out is this side over here. And there's a whole bunch of ways we could do it. You could actually start using this angle now. Um, sine of this angle. Or tangent of this angle equals opposite over adjacent. Or you could use any angle you want in here at this point now. Don't use the right angle. Now. Um, but sine of this angle, sine 48.2, equals the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Or you can do cosine equals adjacent. Or not, actually, no, you can use that. But you want to figure out this side right here. So we do need to use the sine function here if we're working with this angle. Or if we were working with this angle, we'd want to use the cosine function. And I believe we could also use tangent here. Tangent equals opposite over adjacent. So that's also an availability to us. But there's many different ways you can solve this. I'm just going to stick with this angle here because this is the one we've been using. Sine of 48.2 equals x, or opposite if you want. I'm going to call that an O or an x, whatever you want, over 9. And you multiply, bring the 9 up. 9 times the sine of 48.2 is going to equal 6.7 degrees. So Chief Sokotoa, um, that's what we got to remember. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, ka, so ka. Toa, tangents opposite over adjacent. And we just use the inverse of these to get the angle. If you can remember that, you should be all right for a lot of what we're going to do. This is Mrs. Apone. Hopefully that's helpful.